Today is the start of our 1500 kilometer journey from Denmark to England and let's just say one of us is looking forward to it a lot less than the other. Bye! Bye! Wait, let me beep. Which is my beep? <laughs> and the journey home starts now. Oh man, I'm not looking forward to this at all. Like, not one bit. Luckily, while I was at Andreas' house, I managed to pick up some uh, cushion for my tushion. I've got a lot of cushion there, so I'm all right. But it's gonna be three days of riding to get home this time. We're not gonna do it in two like we did last time. Yeah, the plan is to stop tonight in Hamburg the next night in Belgium in a place called Ghent which is exactly the same place as where we uh, stayed the first night of our trip and then the last day is riding all the way home we reckon it's around six hours each day of riding so that's going to be rough as it's going to be hard but do you know what I just think I just think we've already done it once so I also just thought that I'd mention that yesterday was actually the first day that we've taken off riding for this whole trip so I'm feeling really fresh today it feels weird being back on the bike it feels nice so I'm hoping that lasts for a little bit of this first bit of the trip so I, as I enjoy riding again and I'd also thought I'd mention it's been officially five weeks today since we left and today I should hit the 10,000 kilometer mark which is crazy that over the past five weeks we've ridden 10,000 kilometers and it'll be even more than that before we get home. Mental, absolutely mental. So we've been going for about an hour and a half-ish, maybe just a little less and um, I can tell you now that we're both in pain. <laughs> Mitch seems to really be struggling with his leg slash bum situation and my arm's still flaring up. I, we have got some ibuprofen so we'll take some of them. And the wind is also not on our side today. I'm hoping it gets better but I, I don't know. We are getting close to going over our last bridge which is I don't know the name of it but it's a paid one that we've got to do just like we did when we came over from Sweden I don't know how much this one's gonna cost but I think oh yeah it's now feels like we're crossing a border oh it says on there motorbike 145 so that's like 18 quid why has it not worked oh yeah And by so windy, this was some of the strongest constant wind we had ever been in. So much so it had nearly blown this person's bike off the top of their car. The whole way across it felt like you were taking a sharp left hand bend the amount you had to fight it. Oh no. Oh. But thankfully we made it across with nothing more than an arm pump. Although as soon as this obstacle was over, another one started. Shit, now I'm over limit on fuel. Mine will be low then, as well. I had 24 kilometres until the fuel station. I wonder how close we are to one. Oh god, this is dangerous. I don't like this. 11 kilometres away from a fuel station. Now something we really took for granted here was the fact that Mitch was really easily able to Google the nearest petrol station, where in the past that has been a big issue for us. But that's not an issue anymore thanks to today's sponsor, which is Holofly. I honestly can't begin to tell you the stress that we've had in the past trying to search for a SIM card in a new country. When you get through the airport terminal and then there's loads of booths to choose from and they're all advertising different deals and you don't know which one's got the best coverage or the best offer on. And then they ask you for loads of ID, like your passport, 
or sometimes even cash as well and you haven't even got cash yet because you've just got into the country it can be such a faff holofly is a global sim provider that allows you to have data in over 200 destinations as well as regional plans as well so for those of you that don't know what an e-sim is an e-sim is a digital sim card that you can activate instantly so it doesn't mean that you need to traipse around when you get to a new country trying to find a plastic sim card this you can just go onto holofly's website or onto their app pick the country that you're in and then get data in a couple of minutes it will be sent to your whatsapp or your email and then you're sorted there is also a 24 7 support team that are there to help you with any issues that you may have and the best part about it is that real people real life travelers at the other end so you're never going to be stuck with an unhelpful bot so if you want to skip all that stress on your next trip then you should definitely give holofly a try you can use the link at the top of the description and use our coupon code jammygits which will get you five percent off your next plan so do take advantage of this deal and thank you again to holofly for sponsoring today's video do you need some help um i should be okay i don't know what's safer for me to do no stay there stay right in okay this was silly of me really i should have just got fuel early oh yeah it's dry <laughs> I shouldn't really laugh about this. Is that full? Yeah, it's full to the top. Oh, thank God. God, it's a good job we got this, isn't it? I've never been more grateful for something in my life <laughs> than that fuel. Oh, there's a big hair off my thing in it now. Oh, I don't want to get out of this. I'm scared. God, thank God for that MSR bottle. <laughs> That's the first time I've ever in my entire life got that feel. Oh my God. Thank God. Let's not do that again. No. Very bad from us. Well, from me. Oh, this is diesel. Reverse, reverse. <laughs> <gasps> Thank you, darling. We've just made a pit stop at Lidl because on my maps it was showing that all the ones in Germany are going to be closed today because it's a Sunday, but they were all open here. So we just got a bit, bit of lunch and a bit of tea and then we'll probably go to another Lidl in Germany tomorrow because German... Lidl's are our favourite, I think. They have the best stuff, in my opinion. I think we've got about three and a half hours left of the journey today. Deutschland. Back into du du Deutschland. Deutschland. Uh oh, here we go. Here we go. Who's gonna have us? It's alright, we're not, we can't carry masses of cocaine now, Mitch. Oh no, why is she pulling out? Honestly, since coming back from Turkey in that van, the fear we have, that's right, she's going fast, of just the police, especially German police, having us. Oh, I can't deal with it anymore. Oh, just as it starts raining. Oh, really hot raindrops. Oh, amazing. <laughs> this is just bloody typical. Oh my god. What the hell was that? Oh. Guys, I am so close to hitting 10,000 kilometers on this trip 
Oh my god, it's so close. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, and it's reset. Oh, <laughs> I thought it was going to go on to 10. Oh, I wanted to see 10,000. Oh, well, that's that. We've officially done 10,000 kilometers since we left our hometown in Utoxeter. Five weeks ago today, we've done officially 10,000 kilometers, which is just so crazy because when I was doing my test for my bike license and they said, oh, what are you going to do next? Like, what bike are you getting? I would never have said, oh yeah, I'm going to take my CRF to Scandinavia and do a massive road trip round and ride the whole length of the TT in Finland. I had no idea. <laughs> and here we are. Oh, now I'm back to 1.6. That doesn't look as impressive now. Yeah, why is there this many people out and about on a Sunday? From Paris to Berlin and there a disco again. Once we made it through Hamburg, we headed to a lovely couple's house just on the outskirts who generously offered us their garden to pitch the tent. We contacted them through Bunker Biker, which is a platform used to offer a bed, a garage, shower, whatever you have that might help out someone on the road. It's a great resource to use. Since it was their house, we didn't record anything, but we spent the night chatting and they even made us dinner, so we can't thank them enough. We have left so much later than expected from that bunker biker place where we stayed last night. It's now 11 o'clock and we've got a long day of riding ahead of us today to get to Belgium. But it was so much fun. There was actually two other, another couple there who we got on with really well, uh, Iris and Jonas from Belgium. They were there and they're about to ship their bike to Chile and they both had CRFs as well. So as you can imagine, just meeting people who were Doing the same thing as you, like, doesn't happen very often, and uh, it just meant for a long, a late night, and then also a late morning having coffee and stuff. So, yeah, I don't, I don't really mind. I feel like this is just in our script now of what we do every day, but we've just been into Lidl. <laughs> we've just got some bakery stuff, and now we're probably going to hit the road. We've just had basically the whole of the bakery section for lunch and for breakfast for today. And now we're actually going to hit the road, but it looks like we're not going to get there until about 9 p.m. tonight. So we'll most likely be stopping somewhere else for dinner. I don't know how it's going to go. It's an extra two hours on what we did yesterday. It's currently showing seven hours for us. And that's on Google Maps, so you need to add at least another hour, hour and a half to that. But at least the sun is shining. It's so hot right now. We've just come into the Netherlands. This is what our current situation looks like. We have decided to make tea now. It's not that late. It's half six and we've still got another two hours of riding, but the time keeps going up because there's 33 minutes of traffic in Antwerp and that's the last place that we need to get to before we get to Ghent. And yeah, I don't fancy that. So we've just decided to make tea now and then just rock up later because then all that we need to do is put the tent up and go to sleep. It just seems silly to get hungry and tired when we can hopefully, fingers crossed, miss it a little bit by making tea now. Anything to say? No, I've just been very miserable in this video, but that's because I am pretty miserable. It's not a very fun time doing such big stints like this, and I wish we could break it up more, but it just doesn't make sense for us to as well, because it's just prolonging the pain. My brain's not built for stuff like this. Why? Because like, I've just got nothing to stimulate me at all. Yeah. Well, I've been thinking about this dinner for a while anyway.
No! What's happened? I'm gonna cry. The grass has got five minutes left. And the stove's just gone. There's no fuel coming out of it at all. We run out of fuel? No, I don't think so. Why does it feel like everything starts going wrong because it knows that you're like going home? Why does that always feel like it happened? This morning we woke up to a flat mattress as well because I hadn't put the uh, in valve on securely last night, which is my own fault, but you know, I hadn't made that mistake the whole time we'd been away. And uh, yeah, so we woke up and it was flat. And now this is happening. Now I think the stove's blocked. So we can't even cook our tea, which we've stopped for. Well, the rice is semi-cooked, which we're just calling quicks on. Ooh. No, I can't get that one done. Oh, no, I'm going to have to get a screwdriver and all sorts now. It's starting to rain now. It's starting to rain. We're currently watching a video on how to do the maintenance with this stove and it's starting to rain. <laughs> right, come on, we need to get this done. Honestly, if we don't laugh, we'll cry. I'm not even at the point of laughing. I'm just, I can't believe what's just happened. We're fixing the stove and we think it's the fuel filter. We know it's the fuel filter. It's this tiny, imagine like the tiniest little piece of cotton wool in like a cylinder dome that goes in the end of the fuel line. And we realize it's that, we go to change it. We've got one that's wet and just not usable. And then we've got one that's clean and we're buzzing that we found one. And what have we done? Dropped it through one of these holes and now Mitch is trying to, well, we're trying to look for it in this. And it stinks of piss down here and all. Honestly, anything that could go wrong is going wrong. We've still got two hours of riding to do. That's very dramatic. Well, I don't, okay, I'm not being dramatic. Okay, I'm not being dramatic. Okay, everything's fine. No, you didn't say everything was going wrong, it's going well. Will it? Like, no, it's all flat intervals now. Whatever. It's going wrong. And we've still got two hours of riding. It's going to get dark. We're hungry. We're tired. The rice is cold. And we've not got a working stove. That's been open the whole time and it's still not getting full out of it. It's been nearly two hours since we've been here having a quick break for tea before we went got going and now it's at a point where we um, we need we need to go. It's gonna be dark when we get to camp. I mean the the, the traffic's cleared so that's a positive. But oh but even if we get this food now, we're not going to be leaving here till, if we got it going now, maybe half eight. And it's going to be pitch black, completely. Do you want me to keep messing with this, or you, would you rather eat, or would you rather get to come? I want to eat. Oh shit. Well, that's not meant to do that. We're trying it one last time, and if it doesn't work, then we're admitting defeat. I haven't got a lot of faith, but it started, when we turned the camera off, it started pissing fuel everywhere, so, I'll see. It would help if that was open, wouldn't it? I mean, it's not changed anything. No.
See that valve's just playing up. Oh, it's raining again. Sure. It's raining. do because that's not really working but it'll probably warm tea up but now it's raining <laughs> I've had to switch to the phone I don't know how well you'll be able to hear me because I've just put the camera away because it's now pissing it down Mitch has put his raincoat on and is carrying on tea because the freaking stove's now working and I'm over here at, like just under this dry bit but, uh, But I'm trying to keep some stuff wet and uh, dry. Oh, what a day. Oh, I just realised something. What? I don't know if that's burning the fuel properly, so I could just literally put in petrol. No, don't that. eat that. Don't eat it. Don't eat it. Come on. It's still... It's still raining. It's got to be burning the fuel, hasn't it? No, it's there's, just... a there's a flame. If it's a flame, that means it's burning it, it won't be released. But it, it smells bad. It's only a bit of petrol, isn't it? No. Right. Well. It didn't taste like petrol. I'm not having it. I'd rather just turn it off. I'd rather just eat. Okay. That food was actually fine. We're having some chocolate now, and we're going to head off. It's going to be dark by the time we get there, but luckily the traffic has gone, so we've only got an hour and 20 left now. Martha's not happy because we've just had some chocolate and it was melted. She's being grumpy now. It's Martha's turn to be grumpy, so it's my turn to pick the mood up. We've got 127 kilometres left, so hopefully we can get there without filling up with fuel because I cannot be arsed. Oh, and I'm wet through now to my You're not leggings. wet through, come on. I am. Come on. Hey, there's a jump here, look. <laughs> oh, Miss Someone's happy now. That was the most excitement I've had in the last 12 hours of dry riding. I feel like it's only fair for us to keep it real with you though, with that whole situation. Like, just completely honest with how much of a shit show that was and how typical it was that that was the final, like literally the final straw on the final day. Hey, hey, hey. The funniest thing is, I've raved about that stove so much on this trip, about how much I love it. Oh well. As we head off towards our spot to sleep for the night, I just want to say that me and Mitch have been crying with laughter watching this back, and just wait until you see the footage of this ride through Antwerp. During that moment of us trying to cook that food we'd been thinking about all day on the bike, you can slowly start to see our patience with the situation and each other wear thin. Whatever. But genuinely, we believe these situations have helped our relationship so much. And yes, at the time, we might have thought, why the hell do we put ourselves through this when we could have literally just walked into that petrol station and grabbed some warm pastries? But we are so stubborn, especially Mitch. Knowing that the food in front of him would have been wasted, he would have sat there all night trying to get that stove working. But at the end of the day, these are the memories we'll be talking about sat in our rocking chairs when we're old and grey. Growth comes from discomfort, and that's the primary reason we enjoy these types of adventures even if sometimes it might not look like it like we had some peanuts for tea and after an epic but extremely grim ride through antwerp our two drained soggy bodies rolled up to our last camp spot of the trip are you still just listening to music I've had nothing off Mitch since we've been riding because I just get nods and he's just listening to the music. But we've made it. As I've just gone to open it, look what's happened. Oh, thank 
you. The Leatherman once again. Saves the day. Saves the day.